don't know where I was before hydroquinone. It literally changed my freaking skincare game. Hey YouTube, oh my gosh, welcome back to my channel. My name is April. If it's your first time here, I'm a skincare and cosmetic chemist. I talk about all things skincare, back end, front end of all things skincare. So if you're interested in science based skincare, make sure to hit that like button for me down below. Subscribe to the channel because we're here every week, every single week talking about skincare. I feel like I shouldn't even say that anymore because I have been so MIA on my YouTube channel. Like I literally, <laughs> it feels so bad even saying that, but I had to get through it because you know, we got to do the housekeeping. You guys, I'm so sorry. Literally, TikTok has me on a chokehold. I did not plan intend for this to happen. Y'all know, I love my YouTube family. I love you guys so much. And intention was definitely not to literally disappear for almost a month and i'm so apologetic that will change and you guys i just i need to like get it together you know i have a full-time job and i'm doing content creation and modeling it's a lot <laughs> so i'm trying to find that like balance where i'm able to like create content and do this you know and then do sponsored content and then do organic content and just find time to balance all of that because yeah i'm just gonna stop rambling you guys please forgive me please accept my apologies please i promise i'll be better okay so today's video i figured it'd be best for me to jump back into the swing of things with a video ask you guys if you had any questions for me so you know i would answer any like questions that you guys um had um going into the new year and it's obviously almost <laughs> going closer to the half of the year but i really wanted to get these questions out of the way because i'm guessing you guys are probably still waiting around for me to answer i have about six questions in total so i'm going to try my best to get through them as quick as i can because i'm trying to make my videos a little bit shorter in 2022 and not just like so long and spread out so yeah Let's just get right into it. First person here is Artemis, and I hope I'm not butchering that. Artemis asks, do you think there is much room for advancement in, in the cosmetic chemist industry, or is it pretty standard salary job title you receive? I've been thinking about a job as a cosmetic chemist for two-ish years now, and I'm unsure if the average salary I see online will be enough to support me long term. As far as advancement, it just goes back to the traditional rule of corporate where you kind of have to work your way up the ladder, and that means exchanging your time, which means it could be years, months, whatever it is, you kind of have to exchange that time to be able to build credibility with your co-workers, with your boss, with the company at large, for them to be able to trust you to give you that higher position. I don't think there's any title that's higher than being a cosmetic chemist. You could be like an R&D R &D lab manager, you could be like lead of the R&D department, you could lead for project management. I mean, there's so many different roles. There is room for improvement for sure. As far as salary, again, just basically goes back to what I just said. You have to work your way up in order to make that high salary. When you are starting out, you are not making shit. Trust me. You're not making anything at all, so you might have to complement with something else to be able to meet, you know, especially if you have a family, you definitely would need something to support that salary. Um, second part of the question says, what is the day-to-day -day environment of a cosmetic chemist like? Is it fast-paced, high pressure deadlines to meet? Is it slower? Or just trust in the natural process, ETC? Day-to-day -day is very different, just like any other job. Some days are slow, some days are faster. It really just depends on what's going on. Sometimes we just are in a time crunch and we have to just like turn out products for companies. It really just depends. But I will say as far as like, seasonally christmas time seems to be really really busy springtime really busy and then like mid-year also seems to be really busy but other than that usually it's more just like chill and relax especially if you work in a company that really prioritizes their projects like really early in advance then yeah you'll be fine second question is from sam mk sam asks do you think skincare cosmetics to be futile um, which basically means worthless or pointless Excluding sunscreen and OTC treatments, of course, I sometimes find my serums and such to be high key point lines besides that they usually come in hydrating vehicles at best. It would be nice to hear from chemist perspective. So this is such a great question. And for sure, I definitely battled with this before I actually started working in this space. But I honestly feel like it depends on what you're going for, what your skin concern is. If you are needing tons of actives for your skin, so for example, like a serum typically contains like higher dose of active ingredients in them. It really depends on what your skin is looking for, what your skin needs and what your needs are personally as an individual. So yeah, I don't think they're pointless. Obviously there's things like essences, which I don't, really don't think is important, toners. I'm iffy about if you have a really good cleanser sometimes you really don't even need a toner honestly i think if you have a really good cleanser moisturizer and a sunscreen you're pretty much good to go everything else is almost luxury in my opinion okay next question the siho ibrahim asks i have hesitation using niacinamide or any products with it because i'm afraid it would lighten my complexion i'm african could you please break down what brightening and whitening means in the skincare world i'm very careful with my skin and do not want to bleach or lighten or whiten my complexion 
Great question again. As far as lightening your skin, this is why actually hydroquinone became a controlled prescription because people were starting to misuse hydroquinone and there were so many fake products out there as well. So then the FDA started to regulate hydroquinone so you could only get it from a dermatologist. Again, goes back to what you're looking for, but niacinamide, azelaic acid, alpha-butin, those ingredients will most likely than not not brighten your skin. Like you don't have to worry about that. It literally will not brighten your skin. And now if you're going for hydroquinone, which is like the gold standard for uh, skin brightening, you ha will have to go through a dermatologist and you have to communicate to your dermatologist what you're looking for, how light you're trying to get, how bright you're trying to get your skin. And with that concept in place, your dermatologist will be able to prescribe to you something that meets your needs. Next question is from Joan Heisen. She says, I'm 53 with adult cystic acne from jaw to jaw including my chin. I've changed my diet and still have painful acne. Currently I'm on Axone, clindamycin morning with sunscreen and hydroquinone at night only. I'm six weeks in my 20 week regimen via a dermatologist. Is this really going to work? Also is there anything else I can do to avoid this painful acne in the future? Oh my gosh I'm so sorry Joan. I understand deeply how bad you really want to get done with this acne. Fully understand that. This question has a lot of moving parts so we're just gonna try my best to unpack it. First part says that you're currently on axone which is a uh, antibiotic which is great actually because you need something that's gonna help stop you know bacteria from forming acne on your face and clindamycin is actually really great I'm also personally on that it's a topical antibiotic and hydroquinone which is great for brightening what I will say is maybe think of getting something like a spironolactone I remember I had battled a lot of acne a few years back maybe three years ago now my doctor recommended a water pill called spironolactone and what that does is actually stop hormones like testosterone that actually increase the amount of oil that your glands produce thereby stopping acne because you know when there's too much oil that your glands are producing can sometimes also cause acne so I would advise you maybe talk to your doctor about that and then also I love that you're taking axone that's you know an antibiotic I don't want to give medical advice here but maybe also talk to your doctor about like oxycycline oxycycline or something like that like a different antibiotic that might be a lot stronger also for sure I would definitely recommend getting a retinoid from your doctor to start to turn over the skin cells and introduce new skin cells on your epithelial layer of your skin but yeah I think that covers everything you're already 14 weeks at this point of this recording this video into your treatment let me know how this current treatment's going and if it's not definitely take my advice so second to last question here is from Musica Erica she says could you share your experience in hydroquinone did you deal with rebound melasma did you treat your whole face or just the melasma area how often do you use hydroquinone and what products do you use with it and what products do you avoid okay great question you guys are asking such amazing questions thank you so Erica my experience with hydroquinone has been amazing you guys I don't know where I was before hydroquinone it literally changed my freaking skincare game literally just love that ingredient so much I didn't deal with the rebound melasma at all my doctor did recommend that I do two months on and one month off so I do two months of being on hydroquinone and then one month of being off of it so that way my skin takes a break because yes uh, rebound hyperpigmentation is a real thing so I take that sort of one month break and then go back on it so my skin sort of has to like readjust to it again so it's not damaging my skin if you will I don't want to use the wrong word here but yeah pretty much try to take breaks with your hydroquinone when I first started I did start using it on the spots that I felt were you know had a lot more dark spots and then I started to use it all over my face when those spots started to get lighter and match the rest of my face so that way I didn't have parts of my face having a different color and a different part having a different color so that's what I did. I use it once a day at night only, but that's only because I have it together with my treatment treatment. When I have it separately by itself in the tube, I use it twice a day, so morning and night. But make sure you wear sunscreen, very, very important. All right, last question here is from Sasha. She says, is hydroquinone bad? If not, which one can we use? How do you get rid of under eye circles? Do you use oil cleansers to get rid of makeup, even if you have oily skin? Great, great question to round up the segment. All right, so is hydroquinone bad? No. I literally have done a well-detailed video on hydroquinone. Check it out up here. Very well-detailed. Hydroquinone is not bad. It's not the enemy. Trust me. There's so much more hydroquinone in the food that you're eating, like coffee, than the hydroquinone that you're topically going to use on your skin. How to get rid of under eye circles. So with, for under eye circles, I would recommend things like kojic acid. So really, really mild tyroxinase inhibitors like kojic acid, uh, let's see, like really low grade like retinol dosages, products that have caffeine in it. If you have like puffy eyes like vitamin K and maybe even like a really low dose hydroquinone as well because it's a very sensitive area and you don't want to irritate it. Do I use oil cleansers? Absolutely. Whether or not you have oily skin, oil cleansers are very, very important, especially if you have makeup. It's just, when you use oil cleansers, they have particles in it that have affinity with the oil that a lot of makeup products have. 
tab so it's able to go in there and really just sort of lift the oil up your face versus the water cleansers will have a lot of trouble binding to like the oil ingredients in your makeup so it's better to use the oil take off the oil based makeup and then use a water based uh, cleanser to take off the water based ingredients so yeah I hope this is really helpful and I hope this was able to cover a lot I actually really really enjoyed answering these questions thank you guys so much for watching I promise you'll see my face a lot more going forward cannot wait to reach more and more milestones with you guys I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel as always please like the video if you enjoyed the video subscribe and join the family because we're gonna be here every week every single week talking about skincare I'll see you guys next time bye